the U.S. military the on Tuesday successfully wow. intercepted an intercontinental range missile for the first time, a key test of its missile defense system amid heightened tensions with North Korea. The successful test represented a critical milestone for the Pentagon's defensive missile system, said Navy Vice Admiral Jim Siren, director of the Defense Missile Agency. The interceptor was launched from a silo and then a Air Force base in California and did the test missile fire, launched the next one in the Pacific, the Defense Missile Agency said. The test was a major challenge because an intercontinental ballistic missile flies faster than a short-range missile. Prior to Tuesday, the U.S. military had conducted 17 tests of its missile defense system and nine were successful. Becoming almost a weekly exercise, and tonight we are again confronted with a North Korean missile test, one that could bring the communist regime closer to its goal of attaining a nuclear weapon. Lucas Tomlinson is live at the Pentagon with details on the latest launch. Good evening, Lucas. Good evening, James. U.S. officials say the Scud C missile splashed down 240 miles from Japan after first reaching outer space. It's North Korea's third consecutive missile test in the past three weekends, going back to Mother's Day. Yesterday, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis says it's not just the missiles he's concerned about. The North Korean regime has hundreds of artillery cannons and rocket launchers within range of one of the most densely populated cities on earth, which is the capital of South Korea. But the bottom line is it would be a catastrophic war if this turns into uh, combat. Fox News has also learned about a separate test this weekend involving a surface-to-air missile called the KN-06, similar to the Russian S-300 design. Images from North Korea's state-run media show the presence of Kim Jong-un, leader of the rogue communist regime. U.S. officials say a North Korean MiG fighter jet crashed near the launch site of that surface-to-air missile test. In an interview on CBS, Secretary Mattis would not draw any red lines on North Korea, instead choosing to keep his cards close. At this time, uh, what we know I'd prefer to keep uh, silent about because we may actually know some things the North Koreans don't even know. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night. In the past few weeks, the Pentagon has doubled its firepower in the region. The USS Ronald Reagan strike group deployed from Japan, joining the Carl Vinson in the region, giving American commanders two aircraft carriers and more warships capable of launching cruise missiles. And James, the Pentagon is conducting a missile test of its own tomorrow. The Missile Defense Agency will launch an intercontinental ballistic missile from the Marshall Islands in the Pacific into space and attempt to shoot it down with an interceptor missile from a base in California. Fox News will cover it. James? A lot riding on that. Lucas Pen uh, Tomlinson at the Pentagon tonight. Lucas, thank you.
North Korea wants to rain missiles on the US, China does, too. Let's wake up. North Korea's latest missile launch, while certainly not the most sophisticated of its recent firings, sends an ominous message, Pyongyang will not be denied the ability to hit any target it desires, including US bases and eventually the homeland. But is Kim Jong-un simply copying the well-worn playbook of its ally, the People's Republic of China, PRC? The evidence is quite telling. While North Korea's missile arsenal, now at over 1,000 short, medium and long-range weapons, is creating nothing short of a slow-moving Cuban missile crisis in Northeast Asia, China has also been working to perfect its own missile technology on a much more massive scale, and for some experts, represents the gravest threat to the U.S. military today. Indeed, since the days of the early Cold War, Beijing has been developing missile platforms to deter the West. China's efforts picked up rapid speed after the thawing of relations with the United States in the 1970s, allowing for the acquisition of dual-use technologies to aid their efforts. Beijing developed short, medium, and long-range missiles, pairing them with miniaturized nuclear warheads to deter Moscow, at the time its most dangerous adversary. But as the Cold War ended, China began to craft new missile platforms to take on what it considered its next challenge, the United States. Beijing watched with horror as Washington crushed what was then considered one of the more powerful militaries of the world in Iraq in near lightning fashion in 1991. Chinese leaders would correctly conclude that if war between America and China occurred any time soon they would lose, and lose royally. This leaves the United States in a bind as it faces not one, but two nations armed with quickly growing missiles arsenals in a part of the world where Washington's interests are vital. Events closer to home would see China's worst nightmare almost come true. The 1995 to 1996 Taiwan Strait crisis nearly brought Beijing and Washington to blows. The blows, however, would have been all American as China's military would soon discover they could not even find American aircraft carriers operating close to their shores, let alone attack them. The PRC was determined not to suffer that fate. Chinese leaders, even today, know they can't match America in all aspects of modern warfare. However, missiles give them an asymmetric advantage as they are cheap to build and hard to defend against. For the last 20 years, Beijing has been on a crash course to ensure it has not only the ability to strike carriers operating in the Pacific with showers of missiles, but also any military bases near China, or any U.S. allies such as Japan or Taiwan for that matter. Beijing can now call upon thousands of ballistic, cruise and in the future, hypersonic missiles to strike across large swaths of Asia. And of most concern. A carrier killer missile that could target and sink naval vessels at ranges as far as 2,500 miles. North Korea, it seems, is following a slower but similar strategy. Guided by Chinese direct and indirect assistance, the Kim regime is now pursuing missiles of all different ranges, sizes and capabilities, even developing what could end up becoming its very own carrier killer. Just like China. North Korea knows it can't match America's military might head on. So instead, Pyongyang is betting the sheer size and scale of its missile arsenal will keep President Trump at bay, and Kim Jong-un in power. This leaves the United States in a bind as it faces not one, but two nations armed with quickly growing missiles arsenals in a part of the world where Washington's interests are vital. Missile defenses systems could certainly be deployed across Northeast Asia and the wider Asia-Pacific but are expensive, so expensive that defending against every single missile threat is impossible. There does seem a simple solution, for Washington to deploy land-based missiles, just like China and North Korea. However, thanks to the Intermediate Range Forces Treaty INF, signed by the U.S. and Russia towards the end of the Cold War, Washington is prohibited from developing missiles with ranges of 310-3420 miles, the exact range or weapons America needs. So how should America respond? With no restriction on sea-based weapons, 
America could expand dramatically the size of its submarine fleet that can carry cruise missiles to ensure Washington could respond dramatically to any Chinese or North Korean threat. But building more subs takes years, and America and its allies are facing this threat now. America could also withdraw from the INF Treaty, perhaps not upsetting Russia as it has been caught violating it anyway. But unfortunately, it would still take years for America to build new missile platforms and would open the door for Russia to quickly deploy new systems to Europe, potentially gaining a crucial military advantage over NATO. For the moment, China and now North Korea might have one crucial military advantage over America. One that nations like Iran and others will be all too eager to replicate. There is breaking news now on Fox News Channel. This is video just into Fox News from minutes ago. Defense officials launched a, mis a missile as part of a test to try to shoot down an intercontinental ballistic missile similar to the one North Korea is now said to be developing. The missile took off from California's Vandenberg Air Force Base in an attempt to intercept a missile that was launched from the Marshall Islands. This is the first time the military is attempting to intercept that type of missile, and analysts say this could be very challenging. This defense system has a little more than a 50% success rate when the Pentagon used it to try to shoot down shorter-range missiles. Over the weekend, North Korean officials launched their third ballistic missile test this month, according to U.S. defense officials, and we're continuing to watch this video. And as we do, and I want to keep watching this, I want to turn to uh, our own correspondent, Jonathan Hunt, who's at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Explain what's supposed to happen now, Jonathan. Well, Chef, it was a spectacular sight, as you can plainly see, as that ground-based interceptor missile took off from here at Vandenberg. Now, about now, and the actual minutes to intercept uh, is a classified time, but about now, uh, it should be, they hope, hitting the ICBM. Now, as, as you mentioned, the ICBM was launched by the U.S., unarmed, of course, from the Marshall Islands in the Pacific. Then, a few minutes after that, the interceptor was launched from here at Vandenberg. And then, with the ICBM traveling at around 16,000 miles per hour, basically a five-foot-long, very high-tech metal projectile will separate from the interceptor missile and hopefully strike the incoming ICBM. As Admiral James Searing, the head of the Missile Defense Agency, told us in an exclusive interview, it's no easy task. Listen here. It's very difficult. We're talking about intercepting in space at hundreds of miles of altitude with closing velocities of thousands of miles per hour. It's hitting a bullet with a bullet. But it is the Missile Defense Agency's job to perfect the art of hitting a bullet with a bullet, especially in the face of this ramped up testing that we have seen in the last few months by the North Koreans. And most experts say, Shep, they believe that North Korea is in, within a few short years of being able to target the mainland United States with a nuclear-tipped warhead. So this test today, Shep, absolutely critical. And, and these interceptors, are they like always ready to go? They're 24-7, Shep. Uh, they're, most of them are actually based up at Fort Greeley in Alaska, 32 of the 36 interceptor missiles that the U.S. has. We got exclusive access to Fort Greeley ahead of this test where those 54-foot-long uh, missiles are stored in 70-foot deep silos. Uh, there is a team that is on call 24-7 in the, in the control room there. We met with them. They are extraordinary men doing a very difficult job, and they practice every single day. And because of that, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Brower, who is the commanding officer of the 49th Missile Defense Battalion, believes that the U.S. can and will be defended if and when it's necessary. Listen here. We are very confident in the ground-based interceptors and the technology that we have. But again, if we're talking about a nuclear warhead headed to L.A., we want to make sure that we get it. They want to make sure they get any missile headed towards L.A. or indeed any other American city. As many of the men and women who serve up there told us, Shep, this is absolutely a no-fail mission. We'll see if they succeed today in this critical test, Shep. Yep, we'll find out.